Hey guys, in this video I'll be talking about Bernoulli's principle. We'll be looking at everyday applications of Bernoulli's principle and at the end of the video I'm going to be talking about Bernoulli's tube, both uniform and non-uniform. So stay tuned. Before we dissect it, let's look at what Bernoulli's principle actually states. Bernoulli's principle states that in a steady flow of fluid, the pressure in the fluid is low when the fluid velocity is high. Conversely, the pressure in a fluid is high when the fluid velocity is low. Let's look at it one by one. First, this has to be a steady flow of fluid. This means that there is no turbulence in the fluid. Remember, fluid can be either liquid or gas because both can move freely. So here, it has to be a steady flow. The movement of the particles of the fluid are assumed to be in one direction. So they form like layers of movement. One layer of movement of particles above another layer of movement of particles. So they form smooth layers. There is no crossing of the path of the particles. This will create what we call turbulence. In a steady flow of fluid, the fluid velocity is basically opposite to the fluid pressure. If the fluid velocity is high, then the pressure in the region where the fluid velocity is high will be low. Conversely, when the fluid velocity is low, then the pressure in the region where the fluid velocity is low will be high. Let's look at examples. Say that this is a piece of paper, this blue line is a piece of paper, and there is high velocity of air above it. And then below, there's air flowing at low velocity. Now here, when we have high velocity, high velocity will result in a region of low pressure. So this area here will have low pressure. While here, since the velocity of air is low, the air is moving slowly, by comparison, the pressure in this region will be high. So since we have low pressure above and high pressure below, what will happen is, because of the difference in pressure, there will be a force that pushes the paper upwards. The paper will move upwards. This is the reason for the pages flying when you leave a piece of paper or a few pieces of paper or a book open on the table and when the fan is blowing from above. By right, the wind direction blowing downwards should keep the papers flat on the table. However, we notice that the papers tend to flip. The papers tend, the pages tend to turn anyway. And this is because of Bernoulli's principle. Because when there is a high flow of fluid, in this case air, when there is a high flow of air above the paper, then it creates a region of low pressure. Since there is a region of low pressure, by comparison, there will be a region of high pressure. And so this will cause the paper to move upwards, towards the lower pressure. Let's look at another example. Let's say this is a train, aerial view of a train. So let's say this is a train station. So when the train is moving forward, air is going to be moving very fast around it, like this. So the region just around the train will have fluid with high velocity. When there is high fluid velocity, there will be region of low pressure. And when there is a region of low pressure, the region just outside this, by comparison, will have high pressure compared to this region. So this will cause a movement of air towards the train. And this is the reason for the yellow lines in the train station. It's for safety. Once you cross the yellow lines, then you will reach this region where there is a low pressure and there will be a high pressure pushing you towards the train. So it's very dangerous. The same thing can be applied to a lorry. This is a pickup truck and there's a canvas at the back that is covering all the goods. So when the truck is stationary, when it's not moving, there's no movement of air above it. And so the pressure, there is no region of low pressure. But when the truck is moving, then there will be a region of fast flowing air here. Air will be flowing at high velocity just above the canvas. And this will create a region of low pressure. Since there is a region of low pressure, by comparison, the, the area under the canvas will have high pressure. And so this will result in the canvas being pushed upwards. That is why when a truck starts moving, then, or when a lorry starts moving, then you can see the canvas is flapping. This is because of Bernoulli's principle. Because when there is a region of fast flowing air, there is a region of low pressure that's created. And so this causes the movement of the canvas. 
Another example is a simple spray bottle. So when we use the spray bottle, there is a bulb here that is squeezed to squeeze out air. So since the nozzle here is very thin, since this area here, the tube leading to the nozzle is also very small, then the air will flow at very high velocity. Again, once air flows at high velocity in this region here, then a region of low pressure is created. Now, when the pressure here is low, then atmospheric pressure acting on the surface of the liquid here will push the liquid out and the liquid will come out through the nozzle. So the operation of this simple spray bottle is also based on Bernoulli's principle. Now let's look at the long-awaited Bernoulli tube. First of all, let's look at a uniform Bernoulli tube. In the uniform Bernoulli tube, the tube here at the bottom is of constant diameter. The diameter doesn't change. Let's look at what happens when we flow liquid through a uniform Bernoulli tube. Remember the height of the liquid initially will be higher than this. It will not, you cannot flow liquid from the ground level and expect it to rise. So never mind, that, that is another story. But let's look at this situation here. So when the fluid flows here at constant velocity, if the velocity of the fluid flowing through the tube at the bottom doesn't change, then the height of the liquid in each tube here, height of the fluid in each tube, will still not be constant, even without any change in diameter. This is a natural pressure drop due to the resistance in the tube. Because of the resistance, the pressure will drop. This is nothing to do with Bernoulli's principle. So this is the background. Even without any change in diameter, even when the velocity of the fluid is constant, there will be a pressure drop. And sometimes in exams, they might ignore this pressure drop. Because this is the flow of a liquid at the bottom. Sometimes they will flow air through the top and submerge the Bernoulli tube inside a beaker containing a fluid. So in this case, air is the fluid that is moving, not water. Even with the flow of air as the fluid at the top, the same principle applies. There will be a pressure drop because of the resistance that is experienced by the fluid as it flows through the tube. So from the beginning, the pressure will be the highest. As it goes on further and further, the pressure will drop. This is even without the application of Bernoulli's principle yet. But in this case, you can see the height of the fluid that is going up. So what is happening here is because the pressure of the fluid here, the air pressure here is lower than atmospheric pressure, atmospheric pressure will push the liquid into the tubes. That's how the liquid rises up. So the lower the pressure inside this area here, the higher the column, because there'll be greater difference with atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure can push the liquid further into the tube. So the lower the pressure inside the tube, the higher the height of the column. Now let's look at what happens in a non-uniform Bernoulli tube. A non-uniform Bernoulli tube looks something like this. There is a change in the diameter. There is a constriction of the tube. So here the diameter is bigger. At the center it becomes smaller and then at the end it becomes bigger again. The diameter of the tube is opposite to its fluid velocity. So let's say the velocity of the fluid here in the beginning is low. Then by comparison in the middle here, because the tube diameter is smaller, the velocity will be high compared to this. When the fluid flows back on the right side, the diameter is the same, then the velocity will become low again. So the velocity at both ends will be the same and the velocity in the middle where the tube is smaller here it will be high so from low to high to low so what happens with Bernoulli's principle is that when there is a low fluid velocity there will be high pressure so the liquid pressure here is high that is why it is able to go up so high here the column of liquid in the tube here is high then when it comes to the middle the velocity of the fluid is high which means the pressure of the fluid that means the pressure of the water here is low and so it is only able to push up the liquid up to here it is very low whereas when it comes over to this side the velocity of the fluid the velocity of the liquid here is low again so when the velocity is low by Bernoulli's principle this pressure in this region will be high and so it is able to push up the liquid higher but notice that there is a 
drop in pressure. This is why I introduced you to the uniform Bernoulli tube first. Because naturally there will be a drop in pressure due to resistance. So here we have the highest pressure and here we have the second in between the first two pressures because of the drop in pressure due to resistance. And in the middle here we have the lowest pressure because the fluid velocity here is the highest. In the case where the fluid that is flowing through the Bernoulli tube is a liquid, then the higher the pressure, the higher the height of the liquid column here, the water column. Whereas when it is air, it is the other way around because now the fluid that is flowing is not water but air. So the pressure that is going to change is the pressure of the air here inside the tube. So same thing, when the velocity of the air is low here because the diameter is large, the velocity will be low. Then when it comes to the middle, because the diameter is smaller here, the velocity of fluid here will be high in the middle. And then when it comes out again, the velocity of the fluid here will be low again. Again, there already is a drop in pressure that might be ignored in exam questions. But there is a drop in pressure due to resistance. So the pressure here will be higher than the pressure here because of resistance. Now let's look at what happens here. Since the velocity is low, whenever the velocity is low by Bernoulli's principle, the pressure will be high. So the pressure here is high and then the velocity is high in the middle. The velocity of air flowing through the middle here is high because of the diameter is, that is smaller. And therefore, the pressure here in the region of high velocity fluid will be low, low pressure. And so when it comes out here again, the velocity decreases again. It becomes slow again and the pressure will increase. Now here we are talking about air pressure again. So when the pressure, when the air pressure is high, you think about the pressure is the one that is pushing the liquid downwards. So the higher the pressure, the greater the ability to push the liquid downwards against atmospheric pressure. So when there is high pressure, the column is the lowest, the liquid column is the lowest. When there is low pressure of liquid, the liquid column is the highest because it has the lowest ability to push the column of liquid downwards against air pressure. And then here, it is high pressure as well, but lower than the beginning. So it can push it down lower than the center, the tube in the center, but still not as low as the first tube because of the pressure drop due to resistance. That's it for this video guys, I really hope this has been able to help you. If it has, please don't forget to hit the like button, it really does help to support me and my channel. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe for more free education. I'll see you in the next video.